Ties, ties, ties. Today it's all about ties. Welcome to Ask Oki. This is going to be the first of a two-part series on ties. Today is going to be a high-level introduction, and in the second segment, we'll get into some more technical details on ties. So let's get started. Should you wear a tie? Why you should wear a tie? When and with what? Well, ties used to be quite compulsory many years ago, decades ago in fact. It hasn't been until recently, let's say in the last 10 or so years, where the tieless trend has sort of, you know, taken foot. However, there was a time when a gentleman was not completely dressed without a tie. It is, of course, an accessory. It has no function per se. It has no function uh, such as your belt or your coat or your trousers. It's essentially an accessory, an ornament, if you will. However, what a tie does is that it frames the face. If you, again, we talk about this triangle up here, the collar, the shirt collar, the coat lapel, the shirt, which is the undergarment, the tie essentially completes that look. And so a look often looks unfinished without a tie or some kind of a scarf or some kind of neckwear, uh, as I mentioned in a prior video we did on shirts. So should you wear a tie or not? Of course, it's no longer seen as compulsory. Uh, people go around tieless. However, I'm a big advocate for ties, not because uh, they're fancy, but I think it just completes the look, or not because it's functional, but I think it just completes the look. So when should you wear a tie? I'd say whenever you have a jacket on, a coat on, or a coat with a dress shirt that is, like I said again, it completes the look. With what would you wear a tie? A dress shirt, of course, a dress shirt with a proper collar, a stiff collar, that is. Other types of shirts don't take ties. I mean, so if you're wearing your sh casual shirts, uh, such as your popover and so on and so forth, but any shirt that has a collar, a stiff collar, such as I am wearing uh, and can be buttoned at the top, requires a tie and often looks far more finished and elegant with a tie. Now, let's talk about types of ties. Well, for all intents and purposes, really, there are two types of ties. You have your long tie, such as I'm wearing, and your bow tie. Now, when do you wear both? Of course, with a long tie, such as I have on, you wear it with your jacket. Um, it can be worn casually. It can be worn formally uh, in terms of when I say formally, I mean when you're wearing proper business dress. Uh, or when you're wearing something a bit more casual, uh, such as I have on a sport coat. Uh, it just sort of completes, again, the look. Uh, so you can wear a straight tie or a long tie, as we would call it, necktie, uh, with anything, anything at all that has a collar uh, on it. Uh, a bow tie is a different affair. A bow tie, as you would all know, I would imagine, uh, it's just basically a, a piece of uh, cloth that goes that way. So a long tie goes that way, of course, and your bow tie goes that way. And a bow tie is basically a formal uh, accessory. It's one with a formal shirt or sort of with a formal, uh, with formal dress, meaning mostly evening wear. Uh, your dinner jacket, your dinner suits, also known as your tuxedo. Uh, again, the bow tie, uh, it also, it's also one with white tie, your tails, evening tails. Uh, those are a rarity in this time. However, there was a time when uh, the gentlemen wore uh, tails uh, to uh, elegant evening events. And so then they wore a bow tie, a white bow tie, which is quite different from black tie, which calls for specifically a dark bow tie, meaning either black or midnight blue. I prefer midnight blue because most of my dinner suits are midnight blue. So that is the key difference. Those are the two types of ties now. There's so many genres out there and so many cultures um, that have fashioned their own different types of ties. And, uh, you know, these cultures span the globe. So different cultures have different interpretations of their types of tie. But we're talking about the more traditional types of tie, and we will limit the conversation to your traditional long tie and a bow tie. Now, let's talk about the materials uh, these ties are made out of. The most common, of course, is silk, such as I have on. Uh, and this silk could come in different forms. This is an ancient matter, what I have on. Uh, there's uh, wool 
uh, or wool chalice uh, for those who are a bit more uh, into fabrics or into ties. You have wool chalice ties. You have grenadine, which is made out of uh, made out of silk as well. However, it sort of it has a texture, sort of uh, a, a rough texture to it. Uh, you have jacquard. Uh, you have ties made out of cashmere. Um, and even linen and cotton. Uh, you have uh, silk, uh, shantong ties, which is sort of uh, a silk that has a rough uh, touch to it, sort of a rougher finish to it. And these ties can be broken down when to wear them or when, uh, how to choose them, either by season or by genre. So by season, of course, with your silks, you know, you wear them during the cooler months. Uh, silk tends to retain a lot of heat. Uh, it's, a, it's a warm uh, material in terms of the properties. It's warm, so uh, it's used to keep your neck warm during the cooler season, similar with wool, cashmere, and tweeds, and so on and so forth. Uh, so those are more cool weather ties. And then during the warm season, of course, you want to be properly ventilated and you don't want to uh, perspire a lot. So you choose uh, more porous materials or summer materials uh, such as your linens, uh, even cotton sometimes uh, it's made. And then sometimes you have wool blends like your, uh, or silk blends like the uh, silk uh, shantung tie, which is uh, more commonly used in the summer months. It does have some silk in it, but I believe it's blended with linen and some other more porous uh, fabrics to give it sort of that lighter feel. So we've talked about the seasons. Again, in the winter or cooler seasons, you're looking at your silks, you're looking at your wools, your cashmeres, uh, and, and tweeds, actually, tweeds I used to make. And then in the summer months, you're looking at your linen ties, your cotton blends, your silk shantung, and so on and so forth. Uh, grenadine sort of sits uh, in between because of the way it's woven. It's woven quite openly. It, it almost looks like a fresco when you put it up. You can see through it. So it's, it's, a, it's a silk, but it's woven openly and, uh, and it's worn pretty much year-round by many. Uh, some refer to it or sort of look at it as a four-season tie. So in terms of the uh, when to wear them or different fabrics and where to wear them. Those are sort of the seasonal buckets. Now, in terms of the occasion, silk is a more formal fabric or more formal material. So with your, let's say, worsted suits, your business suits, uh, your evening suits, anything that has sort of a smooth surface or sheen to it, uh, your silk suits or uh, even mohair, uh, certainly wool, call for a silk tie. Again, the idea is a sort of congruence or sort of harmony. So if you're wearing a, a, a fabric in your clothing, be it your jacket or your trouser that has sort of a smooth finish to it, you want to pair it with a tie that reflects the same uh, ideology or philosophy, if you will. Uh, so it doesn't have to be exactly the same material or fabric. Uh, silk and wool, of course, are different, but worsted wool has a very flat finish to it, so it goes well with silk, or it takes a silk tie more properly. So silk, again, with your smoother fabrics, your worsted wools, uh, your mohair blends, your silk blends, and so on and so forth. Anything that has a nice sheen to it, barathea, uh, all sorts of evening jackets, of course, or wear, including even velvet which sort of uh, is cotton, but has sort of a, a nice sort of silky feel uh, to it. Now, wool, when do you wear a wool tie? Wool ties tend to be a bit more chunky or rougher on the surface. Similar to your wool jackets, so it's going to be more not like your Worcester wool. So the wool used for wool ties is woven differently from the wool used in, let's say, your worsted wool suits. Uh, the wool in your ties or wool ties look more than your look more similar to your tweed jackets, your tweed jackets, uh, your more fall type jacket. So usually has a rougher feel to it. So it has to be paired similarly with your tweeds, your let's say you know heavier 
fabrics worn in the fall winter period, even corduroys, which is a which is a cotton, of course. So that's it for wool. Wool again should be paired with less formal or more casual outfits, meaning casual suits, casual jackets, uh, or trousers, your flannels, in fact. Uh, flannels, which tend to have sort of a rougher feel to it and is a more casual wool than, let's say, worsted wool, would take a wool tie. Uh, similar to cashmere ties or any sort of blends of wool and cashmere, again, the idea is to reflect the surface uh, the material or the fabric on the, on, the, on the tie itself has to be reflected on the clothing you have on, meaning your suit or your jacket and trousers. Grenadine sort of is the sweet spot. There's a reason it's called the Swiss Army Knife of, of, of neckties, because not only is it applicable across all seasons, uh, grenadine is something you could wear uh, literally all year, from winter all the way to the summer. In terms of the uh, dress philosophy, or sort of how, you, how to wear it, grenadine is also one of those ties that essentially falls, can be worn uh, with a very formal suit, business suit, a worsted suit, and it can also be worn with a very casual suit, meaning your tweeds and your flannels, uh, your linens and so on and so forth. Uh, and so that is why a lot of people, if you're building a tie wardrobe, many start with the grenadines because they tend to get uh, a lot of mileage out of that tie, uh, especially when you're starting out with building your, your tie wardrobe. Uh, you may want to refer to uh, a previous video I had, uh, a tutorial I, we shot on my own personal tie collection where we went through all by ties and I talked about each of them. I remember promoting the grenadine tie uh, very heavily because I think it's just a very versatile piece. And then, of course, in the summer, you have your, uh, your uh, linen ties, your shantungs. Those obviously go with more your linen suits. Again, the idea is to match and mirror, to match and mirror. So you look at the suit, you're wearing a linen suit, uh, the, a linen tie or linen necktie or silk shantung uh, necktie mirrors sort of that slobby texture of linen. Or if you're wearing a linen blend jacket, uh, wool silk linen, or any different blends of it, uh, or you will notice that a shantung tie, which sort of has these slobs, it has this slobby feel to it, it mirrors the nature of the fabric on your linen suit. Uh, and so again, in the summer, I highly recommend either pure linen ties or silk shantung ties uh, in terms of just the aesthetics. We've talked about the functional seasonality or the seasonal function of those ties. Now in terms of the aesthetic of it, uh, again, they mirror the texture or overall appearance of your summer garments. So, that's it in terms of uh, the ties, ma tie materials, what types they are, when to wear them, what seasons to wear them, and how to pick them when wearing specific outfits. So in concluding this first segment, uh, thank you. Uh, you obviously ties are ubiquitous. Um, Unfortunately, we don't make ties at Askoki, but uh, there are any number of names we uh, highly recommend. I have all my ties, of course, made for me by my very good friend Patricio Capelli at EG Capelli, which I highly, highly uh, recommend. Of course, uh, another name that I would recommend that I have used to make bespoke ties would be, you know, Benedict Fritz of Shibumi. Shibumi, it's, a, it's a, you know, Florence. I think he's based in Florence. It's a Florentine uh, shop. And then there's so many other names, you know, H.N. White, uh, Drake's. Um, I mean, the list is completely exhaustive. And uh, this is uh, the purpose of this video is not to talk about the different brands because you, you can find any number of brands. It's just to talk specifically about the nature of ties, how and where to wear them. And in the next segment, we'll get into some more technical details. For instance, how to tie a necktie, how to tie a bow tie and so on and so forth. And with that, we bring this episode to a uh, conclusion. Thank you for joining us. 
Remember to visit our websites to look at our uh, products on there. We have our Askoki shirts, such as I'm wearing. We have our Askoki jackets. We have our Askoki classic trousers, of course, and any other number of trousers. And so many products are out, uh, on there. So please do yourself a favor. Go to www.askoki.com. That's www.askoki.com slash shop. Go to the shop section and you will see a broad array of all the products we carry on there. Of course, uh, when you go to the website, we have our wardrobe tool called the Genie. Uh, feel free to drive around to test drive it, play around with it. It's an amazing tool that helps you sort of manage uh, your wardrobe. And then, of course, we have content or the blog section of the website where a lot of the videos we uh, publish, including this one, usually reside. That is a repository for all the videos we shoot uh, in addition to our YouTube channel and the reels, of course, we share on Instagram, which brings me to our YouTube channel where you may be watching this. Please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. We love it when you do. We even love it more when you comment. I'm always on hand to respond to all your comments and questions and discourse in general. Instagram, of course, please follow us on Instagram, Askoki IG, that, that's A-S-K-O-K-E-Y, IG, Askoki IG is the handle. Uh, please follow, uh, like the comments, uh, uh, like the uh, posts and reels and comment as well. I am very active on there, and as many of you know, uh, I am known there as the king of drip or the professor. Uh, I love to engage you, I love the audience, and please, please keep the comments coming. Uh, finally, our Discord community. Uh, it's a private community of like-minded individuals. Uh, there is a, a good, a large community and growing community on there of like-minded people where we discuss everything, uh, classic dress and beyond. So please feel free, uh, you're welcome to uh, join our Discord community. You will find a link to all these social media platforms below this video. Uh, don't forget to uh, click on each of them, subscribe, join or follow. So with that, I thank you for joining us for this segment and I look forward to the second segment on ties. Goodbye.